Hi, everyone. Um, I like the crowd warm up thing, so I am going to steal that. Uh, and I think this is a good take from the SQL queries we saw in the last talk. Uh, how many people know what a data warehouse is? Very cool. Uh, how many people work somewhere with Snowflake? All right. Each of you should email me. <laughs> I am one of the founders of a company called Espresso AI, and we are using generative AI to do data warehouse optimization. Very specifically, we are starting with saving people money on Snowflake. Snowflake costs are one of today's top line items. Uh, they're growing super fast. We commonly hear customers say that their costs are growing 20% a quarter. We use generative AI to make it better. Uh, generative AI, what can't it do? We're a team of ex-Googlers. We worked in uh, Google Search and uh, Google Storage using uh, NLP to make search results better and saving Google uh, hundreds of millions of dollars through performance optimizations. So this is a take on combining those two technologies and uh, making them work elsewhere. We've seen great results. We're saving customers up to 70% on their Snowflake bills. Little bit about how it works. Uh, we basically do two things. One is query management. So RAI will optimize and route your queries on the fly. It's like having a DBA tune every query that you run. The other thing is warehouse management. Our models learn your unique query workloads. Uh, they understand what you're running, what your jobs look like, how long your queries take. And they use that to make real-time optimizations. Uh, if you've set up Snowflake before, you're probably familiar with the sort of static configuration where you have like a Looker warehouse, a DBT warehouse. Uh, a warehouse in Snowflake is what uh, you'd normally think of as a cluster. Um, that's hard to configure to begin with, and there's kind of only so much you can do. Demo. Our product really just kind of involves turning it on and saving a bunch of money. So there's not a ton to demo, but I can show you what the customer experience is. Uh, so we all know that data-driven is really racking up a snowflake bill. And basically, if you were to turn on Espresso, our average customer would see their bill go from something like this to something like that. For the kind of customers where our product works really well, uh, it goes from uh, you know 100% to closer to 60, 70% savings. So the, the orange part is how much we're saving. The blue part is how much is left. And synthetic data is really great, but I think a live demo is even more compelling, for which I will need a volunteer. Uh, Matt, would you come up for a moment? <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> uh, Matt, well, it's a really easy to use product. I hear that data-driven is really racking up the Snowflake bill. Would you like to try Espresso AI? Well, I thought you'd never ask. I promise that this was not rehearsed. Here you go. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My work is done as an organizer. <laughs> is it actual money? It is, it is actual money. Actually, it's, it's, it's actually, yeah. This is fantastic. This is the best event. <laughs> Even 112. <laughs> it's just that easy. <laughs> Behind the scenes, here's kind of what happens. Uh, so first, this is our onboarding workflow. Uh, it's a bunch of SQL on the screen. You don't need to read it. The point here is to just sort of show all it takes to set this up is like you copy paste this, you run it. It can take less than two minutes. And these are the two parts that I mentioned before. So first, query optimization. This is a pretty typical query coming out of Tableau and hitting Snowflake. It's running over the TPCH uh, test data that ships with Snowflake. And it looks like a fine uh, machine-generated, you know, ORM-generated ORM query. It does not quite look like what a human would write, but it's all right. 
This is what it gets rewritten to. So basically our model notices that it had an extra join, which is really common. There's probably some template somewhere in Tableau that was uh, you know, not quite the most optimal way to write this, but that's how the code ran and it spit it out. Um, and yeah, it just runs faster. Uh, one thing I should note is that these, uh, these queries are formally verified. So we actually check that the input, which is here, and the output, which is here, are mathematically equivalent and will always give you the same results. Um, getting back uh, the right result for half the price is great. Getting back the right result 90% of the time is, is not so good. So we really are aiming for like compiler level uh, accuracy here. In case it's not clear, I just want to mention, like, we're not a dev tool, right? It's not like you paste this in and get this back. This literally happens on Roots of Snowflake. And then warehouse optimization. So here's a very typical static config. You have dbt, you have looker, you have some ad hoc queries that folks are typing into the uh, Snowflake UI. And so your dbt job goes to your dbt warehouse. It's a large warehouse because some of your dbt jobs are expensive. It can run for 15 minutes, and it costs you two credits. Um, credits are like money, but they're called credits, so you don't feel as bad spending them. <laughs> Looker goes to your Looker warehouse. It hits a medium warehouse, runs for half that time, and uh, costs half as much because it's a medium warehouse, costs you half a credit. And your ad hoc queries go to a small warehouse, cost you another half credit. In total, you spent three credits. Here's what this looks like with Espresso. So hypothetical example to make the numbers work well, oftentimes you're going to size your warehouse to the largest thing you have running there. So you have some expensive dbt job, but because we know what your traffic looks like and how long your queries take, we know that this isn't it and that you're not benefiting from the parallelism. So we spin up just a medium warehouse that takes 15 minutes to run your dbt job. When the looker job comes in, we can slot it in midway, and we understand that there's someone on the other end there waiting for the looker uh, dashboard to load, so you don't want to make them wait. But the dbt job is like a thing that it's a cron job that runs every 24 hours, so it doesn't matter if there's another minute of latency. Um, and finally, when the ad hoc job comes in, we can slot that in as well. And that'll actually run faster in this case because we already have the medium warehouse running. So we know that uh, you can just toss it on there. And in this example, uh, you run all of this, you get your results back faster, and you do it for a credit and a half, uh, which is 50% better. Um, I'm not going to read the user testimonials, but you can. Uh, you know, it's working really well in production. Uh, it's very easy to set up. Uh, we try to put in a lot of work on the back end to just make this a no-brainer for our users. If you would like to try this out, uh, you can reach out to me. So we give back an estimate of savings. Uh, so you pretty much know what you're getting up front. Um, this works. This has been working really, really well. We also charge entirely based on savings so that, it, again, we really are just trying to save you money and trying to make this a no-brainer. Um, if you use Databricks, we have a wait list for that. So you can email me about that, too. Uh, and also, we're hiring. Yeah, I should say you the same question. What, what has been the hardest uh, technical challenge so far? There's kind of the good answer and the, ban the bad answer. So the good answer is reinforcement learning. Uh, our models are reinforcement learned. That's how they learn to take code. Uh, there's no like good data set of bad SQL queries and good SQL queries. There are some. But being able to use reinforcement learning to generate better queries is uh, really a way that lets us write superhuman code. Um, and reinforcement learning, for anyone that's worked with it, is just hard. It is like much harder to get that to converge. Um, so that's the fun answer. The, the bad answer is just like infrastructure, such a grind. And I think especially coming out of Google, we were all shocked at how much stuff there is to just hobble together and, and how many things don't work. Um, a, a related question that we get is like, which model are you using? And we've, we've basically settled on the Llama models, um, largely because they work really well with everything. Like, it is really difficult to benchmark. Like, of course, every other model says that it's better than everything else that has come out. All of the tests are like homegrown and not reproducible. 
Um, and just getting these things to run is a nightmare. So like, it's great that uh, Meta has QA'd Llama for us at least, and it's, it's been good enough.